Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So we've got our next repair job here that we need to uh, work on. This belongs to one of our YouTube viewers named Steven. He reached out to me recently and uh, told me about the problem that he was having on his lathe. So this is a shaft and a pulley out of his lathe that needs some repair work. So the, uh, the lathe in question here, this is what he told me. It's a wholesale tool, so it's probably just a brand name uh, made by Tita. It's a TD-4 lathe. So you guys that might be interested in looking that up so you can see what it is and uh, you'll, you'll see what machine this is for. So the problem that he said he had is that when he goes to put this thing in back here, this has happened two separate times now, but recently this has happened, which caused him to go ahead and tear the headstock down to get it rebuilt or to find out what the problem was. And then once he did, he, he realized what was wrong. So he puts it in back gear and then the pulley, the shaft just locks up. So what you have is you got this little pin right here. And if you pull this, drop it in, all right, the pulley, it drops in. There's a couple, there's a couple uh, counter bores on here that uh, we've got the pin pulled. And then if we drop it in, there it goes. It drops into place. So you can put it, I, I'm not sure if that's in or out of back here exactly, but just showing you how it works. So got this collar loose. I guess that just holds it in place against this gear. We'll take that off. And then the pulley will come off here. All right, and you can see the uh, galling and the wear on the shaft right here where the pulley runs, okay? So this right here needs to be repaired. So we're gonna do a flame spray repair on this guy right here. We'll go ahead and press this gear off out of the way. A little better look at the, uh, at the pin on how that works. All right, so we got a flame spray repair on that. That's what we're going to be doing today. This is going to be a two-part video. Part one, we're going to fix the shaft. And part two, we're going to fix this pulley. So on the pulley, the manufacturer, this is a, this is a cast iron pulley. They do not, or they did not put any kind of um, bronze or bearing material in here. They simply just bored the, the cast iron to the sides to run directly on the shaft. And if you look in there, you can see you can see galling in there. So this is what ended up locking up on Steven whenever he was trying to put this thing in back gear. So you got a journal on this side, you can see where that groove is, that's just an oil groove. So you have a journal here, it's about an inch wide. And on the back side, you've, got, you've also got the other journal, it's an oil groove and it's also about the same width there, about an inch, maybe inch and a quarter. So we're gonna set this pulley up and counter bore both of the ends and uh, press us in a piece of uh, bearing bronze on both sides and then bore it to size. So that's how we're gonna repair that. Bore it out, put some bronze in there and get it back to spec. All right, so this will be part two. So for our first video, we'll go ahead and get started on this guy. I wanna get the gear pressed off and we'll set this up in the Victor lathe. We have to do our, we'll have to do our undercut and then build up and then machine it back to size. Very um, simple, straightforward operation. I've shown this many times, so we've got a playlist on the channel if you want to see some more of the flame spray repairs that I've done and uh, some, of the other, you know, some of the other jobs that we've had to tackle. So let's go ahead and uh, get jumping on this and get it started. All right, we're set up here in the electric press. We'll use our press plate and uh, go ahead and get this gear press off. I don't think it's very tight on there. Catch it as it falls. All right, there we go. So one of the things you always got to make sure of whenever you do any kind of flame spray for pretty much any welding altogether, but especially flame spray. Make sure you get all of the oil and grease off of your parts completely. There's actually oil down inside this because this is gonna be your through spindle there as well. So just gonna use the smart washer to go ahead and get this cleaned up.
All right, guys, we're over on the Victor lathe. Now, one of the things I want to point out, we're going to use a six jaw chuck for this. Now, this is a, a just true chuck, so we can dial this thing in. But this particular job would be great for a four jaw chuck. The only problem is I took my four jaw down to the new shop to use on the Precision Matthews lathe. So we're going to use this one today. Now, the other issue that we got, we're going to have to support this with a center. This is the end of the spindle there. There's no center that's cut in this, and plus I can tell that it's been hit on. You can tell it's flared a little bit. So this ID is not going to be running true with any of these journals right here. So we need to set it up in the, in the lathe here and get it indicated running nice and true, support it with a steady rest, and then come in here with our compound set at 30 degrees and just machine a, a slight center in there that, uh, that we can then use to hold with a, uh, what we'll, we'll use one of my, like this guy right here, uh, known as a bell nose or a bull nose center. I've got a couple of these, and unfortunately they're all pretty well used like this. I'm hoping that these little grooves pressed in there isn't gonna affect our run out, but I'm, I just, this is what I got. I don't have any brand new ones. This is, this is dad stuff. So there's the other big boy there, and you can see all the, the grooves that's been pushed into it. But this is actually something I've been meaning to replace for years, and I just never think about it until you need it. So I've got it all cleaned off so it doesn't have any grease or oil on it. We'll go ahead and chuck on this journal right here. This should be a seal journal, I believe. And I'm going to try to lightly clamp down on it with just light pressure and try to square it up so you can feel the journal kind of square against all the jaws there. And we'll do some equal pressure all the way around. And hopefully this is going to run nice and straight just like it sits. Let's go ahead and spin it and we'll see. Visually that looks like it's running nice and straight. But let's go ahead and put an indicator on it and see what our run out our actual run out is. So there should be, this should be an, a bearing journal that's right behind this uh, shoulder here. So we'll check this one first. That is about as true as you're gonna get it. That's not even a half a thousandths. Let me uh, see if I can get you guys a tighter shot of that. That is right where you want it. So that side's gonna be pretty good right there. So let's run down and check another journal. We're gonna, let's just say we're gonna true it up right here on this one for our center. This is where you're checking for concentricity. You wanna make sure the shaft is running nice and, uh, nice and true. I'd say that's less than a thousandths. That's not bad. I, I was not expecting to chuck that up and get it that close right out of, right out of the bag like that. So that's gonna be good enough. We're gonna go ahead. I'm gonna wipe this thing down again because it's still got a little bit of, uh, feels like the residue from the uh, smart washer. We're gonna wipe that down with some degreaser. And then I'm gonna set a steady rest here. I'm thinking either, since this is a bearing journal, I think I'm gonna go in right behind it right here. This is where a shaft collar comes in to, to keep the uh, pulley from sliding off. And we'll run our steady rest right here so that we don't put any rub marks there on the actual bearing journal. Make sure that the ways are completely clean of chips and make sure the bottom of your steady rest doesn't have any chips or dust stuck to it either. and don't slam it down on there. Some people throw these things around and cause little dents and dings all over the machine. All right, we gotta back these out. This top one is the one I need to fix. That thing is, I don't know, it's galled or it's got some trash in there, causing it hard to, hard to adjust, which is not good when you're trying to fine tune this thing when it's running. Get it uh, visually set about where you want it. Right up there close to that shoulder. And I need to get a wrench and we'll lock this in. Okay. Now what we're gonna do, 
we're going to put it in gear. And I'm going to spin it because the way that I adjust these on these uh, fingers here is that you can feel it. You can feel the friction, the friction transferring through this, uh, this uh, finger knob right here. Now, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take a little bit of whey oil. Just put a couple drops of whey oil on there. You just want to touch it. You don't want to push it, just touch it. All right, I can feel it touching right there. I'm just going to go around the back of the machine and do the other side. I'm trying to get the feel right, because like I said, you just want to touch it. If you apply too much pressure, you're going to be pushing it off off center. So it feels good right there. And I'll do the same thing with the top one. This is why I got to fix this, because you need to have a good feel for these things. And this one is tight, so we got to repair this thing. Once you get the bottom two set, you should be good, and you just want to use the top to support it. All right, I can feel it right there. We're going to go ahead and stop the machine because we're ready to go. Now we'll go ahead and get our compound here loosened up, and we're going to swing this around to uh, 30 degrees and then manually cut a new center in the end of that shaft there. All right, we got a uh, carbide boring bar there that we'll use. Already should be on center, so we should be ready to go. So we'll unlock it, and we'll come in here and uh, touch off our bore, make a few passes, and get us a center cut there. All right, we should be ready to go. Just touching there. That was 20 thou. Here's another 20. That's looking pretty good, but we'll uh, we'll probably take one more cut and get you a tight shot of that uh, of that cut being done. Now that's not really necessary, but I want to go ahead and just lightly touch this face and maybe that OD there as well, just because I can actually physically feel the imperfections where this was probably bumped on with a hammer. So we're just going to take a few thou and just try to make it look a little more presentable. That's 5,000. This end just hangs out the back of the machine, so it shouldn't affect anything, you know, this very end of the shaft there. So I'm gonna take another five thousandths and then we'll, we'll call that done on that. All right, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the, uh, the steady rest off out of the way. And I just remembered something. At the new shop, I acquired a new TMX brand, interchangeable tip, interchangeable tip life center. And I remember it has like a bell nose tip that goes in there and it may be big enough to uh, fit this right here. So I actually just measured this up and uh, I'm gonna go grab that center and see if we can use that new live center to hold this to hold this in there so i'm going to go do that since we're uh we're getting ready to go grab us a, a bite for lunch i'll swing by the shop grab that center and then we'll be back to uh, get this finished out all 
All right, we stopped by the other shop and picked up our new Live Center. That's the one we were just talking about. So it's a TMX brand. There's your part number in case anybody's interested in this. I got this for the Precision Matthews lathe or to use on the American Pacemaker. And it's brand new. We haven't used it yet. You can see I, can't, I haven't even unwrapped uh, anything with this. We just put it in the toolbox and I kind of forgot about it until we just brought this whole uh, issue up of having a good bell center. So this may be the one that we end up using right here. So we have that one or this one right here. I will, uh, I'll check to see which one we need to use. And then we'll check our, this is the actual center here. Feels nice and smooth. So we'll have to knock this one out. So this should be the tool that you use here. It's like a wedge that you'll uh, stick in here and uh, knock that knock that out and then put it put whatever one. So you got a regular center tip right there. You've got several different tips according to what you need. So these right here you can actually use if you don't have a center and you have like kind of like what we're running with a tube. You could actually use this guy right there to hold it on the outside versus the, the inside there. So we'll get this set up and uh, we'll go ahead and carry on with our machine work. I was, I was expecting that to be tighter. This is the center that we'll use. Let's go ahead and inspect it and see where our run out is. It usually changes just slightly, even after you cut it and you put a center in there. It'll sometimes change. So it looks like a half a thousandth, maybe six tenths run out, which I'm gonna say that's pretty good for what we're doing right there. We're just gonna leave it right where it's at. We'll check this journal too, which is the one that we're actually repairing let's see what it's showing so about the same i'd say six to seven tenths run out i know i could put a different indicator and show you that but i can i can look at that and tell about what it is so we're going to leave that one we're just going to leave it right where it's at we'll check our main journal up here and it's still less than a half a thousand so that one hadn't moved there so you know, so we're getting around a half a thousand to uh, run out here, which is going to be fine. So we're, re we're ready to go. We're go Next step is we're going to, I'm going to clean this again. And then we're going to put our masking compound on here to protect these other journals. The masking compound simply protects the other journals where you don't want the metal powder to stick. So it'll be painted here and here. And then we'll, uh, then we'll do our undercut. This is our masking compound, Solution 103 from Eutectic. Shake it up nicely and you just paint it on just like you would paint. First thing I'll start with is this key right here. Since it's right next to the edge of our buildup, I'm going to use a, uh, a small acid brush here to make sure I get it down in there good. And then we'll coat the rest of the journal. It always helps to dry this with some heat, but I like using this burns o propane torch to do that, so I'm not using up my acetylene. We've got our masking uh, nice and dry now. So one of the things we haven't done yet, I haven't pointed out is the size that this is. And this is turned to 51 millimeters. Seems like an odd size, but they probably did that so that it would match up, you know, and everything fall into place here. But if we take our two to three mics and we mic here in the center where it doesn't actually have wear. Mics two inches, eight thousandths. So <clears throat> I've got that written down. 51 millimeters or two inch eight thousandths. So 
So that's one of the added benefits of doing the, um, this, the flame spray that we're doing is that we're easily able to build this surface up and bring it right back to the spec that we want. The other option that you have is you could actually, if you really wanted to, if you, maybe somebody was repairing this for themselves and they didn't want to try to weld it or have it weld, you could, you could skin this down to like say the next size, but then you're getting even closer to this size journal right here but it's not out of the realm that could be done. But we're bringing it back to original specs, which is 51 millimeter, plus it's gonna clean up all these little, you know, these gouge spots in there where it galled. We're gonna get all those out and make sure it's all cleaned up nice and well. So next phase from here, now that we got it masked, we're gonna set up a tool and we're gonna undercut this approximately 20 thousandths. And if the area here where these spots are, are not cleaned up, we'll only isolate our cut in that one area uh, to get the, to get these low spots cleaned up out of that. So I'm going to use this uh, Tetra Mini Cut for the undercutting of the threads. But what uh, what I was going to point out here is I've taken one of the tips that's had some wear on it, and I touched it up over on the uh, the diamond wheel and the carbide grinder to kind of make more of a wider flat and radius on the end of that tip, and that's the one that we'll use for our undercutting there. That was a 10 thousandths undercut. Everything looks pretty good except for this, uh, this end here where you still got a few little divots worn in there. This is probably the galling that happened whenever it got you know, stuck and you had to get it taken apart. So we're gonna make another pass across there at 10 thousandths and then if uh, these little holes aren't cleaned up, we're gonna isolate a cut just in that area to uh, get those cleaned up. We've got the undercut done here. So what I've done is I've taken my insert. We, uh, we turned it down on uh, number one. That's the one that I dressed. So I indexed it around the two. Two is a uh, brand new cutting edge there. Sorry, it won't focus, but that's a brand new threading tool tip. So we're gonna use that to uh, cut our thread. After you thread it, you want to go over it with a good clean file without any oil and grease on it, just to remove any of those burrs. I'm not even really pushing down, I'm just letting the file drag. Just like that. We are ready to build it up with our flame spray now.
All right, whenever I spray it, I go ahead and just put it down in low gear, turn it on. I've got this fan right here. I like to just use a fan and uh, cool it down kind of naturally like that. So. Put it on high. I think what we'll do is go ahead and run it down a little closer than that. Get rid of the welding blanket. Give the uh, ways a wipe just to remove any dust that might settle on it. Yeah, there we go. Feel the heat coming off that there. So we're just gonna let this uh, let this cool. And then whenever it's cool to the touch where I can grab it and it doesn't have any warmth to it, that's when we'll actually put our turner tool in there and get it turned. All right, so we've allowed it to uh, cool off completely there. So it's cool to the touch. And we're gonna go ahead and start our turn in there. I'm gonna start off by using this uh, MCHNN tool. Uses a CNMG insert the 120 degree corner we use that and see how it does we'll touch this off and uh, start roughing it down so we're just getting the high spots down first That was two roughing passes at 20 thousandths uh, per pass. I just do this to try to get the uh, dust off of it. It should put us within 20 thousandths of being the size. 29 and 29. And we're looking for two inch, eight thousandths of our finished size right there. So that's right at, <clears throat> what's that? Uh, 19,000. So what we'll do from here is make a couple finish passes across there. We'll slow the feed rate down and then take a lighter cut, kick the RPM up. So it'll kind of improve the finish there. And we try to leave about a thousandths oversized so that we can use our emery cloth and actually polish that down and make it a really nice, smooth and bright finish.
That should have been our finished cut there. I'll give it a uh, give it a mic and see where we landed. All right, two inches nine thousandths and about three tenths on that end there. And right about the same there, two inches, nine thousandths, and maybe four tenths on that end right there. So it is turning nice and straight. So all we gotta do is polish from here. We need to get all this cleaned up, get all of our masking uh, polished off of there, and uh, get this polished to size, and, and we'll be, we're just about done with this guy. Just real light pressure at first, just to try to uh, pull the masking off of there. And we come back in there and finish it out. Still got a little buildup right there. So what I'll do, since I can see it better, I'll go ahead and put a tool in here and knock that off. Still got over a half a thousandth to come off. That when you're when you're polishing this buildup like this, you can you can get a half to one thousandth pretty quickly using some coarse paper. But after that, it gets a little tricky to get it down there. So that's why I always leave it at one thousandth. You just have to be a little bit more aggressive at this point. I'm putting more pressure on the paper now, and try to do both ends evenly because it's real easy to uh, polish it smaller in the middle there. We're getting real close though. That's looking real good. Now we'll take it from here. I've got some uh, 220 grit now. put more of a fine polish on it. But I like that. We're going to start getting some warmth in it. I can feel just a little bit of warmth. So at this point, since I'm literally within a half a thousandths, I need to let it cool down again and make sure that we're not going to undershoot our size there. So I'm going to work on these other ends to kind of get rid of the discoloration. And, uh, and then once we do that, we'll let it cool. Use some fine paper for that right there, just a little bit. Need a narrow strip. Here's one. Something that's already worn out some, so you're not really cutting. Still got, I need to get a pick and get that little bit out of that uh, keyway right there. But um, we'll probably try to get this little undercut with a little tiny piece. You can take a piece of this stuff here and try to rip just a tiny little bit off the edge, off of one side like this. And sometimes you can get into those corners, the little undercuts. That one's gonna be a little tricky though. Let's see. May just have to use some Scotch Brite, honestly. Get that wire brush is working good. Get that one there too. Yeah, the wire brush was the trick right there. 
So that's looking good. We're just about there. I want to let it cool down. It's not hot, but it's just got some warmth to it. So it may be one or two tenths bigger than I want it to be. Let it cool down for a few minutes. I might put the fan on it and then I'll mic it and I'll finish this out. But we're just about there. So we've got our shaft all polished up here and it is uh, cool to the touch now. I've given it about 10 minutes and it's cooled down. I'm gonna do a final check on this just to make sure. I like to make sure there's no dust on the tip of the, uh, the mic here. So our target was two inches, eight thousandths or 51 millimeter. And on that end right there, I'm exactly two inches, eight thousandths and zero tenths. That one right there is one tenth under that. That's what I was talking about. It's easy to polish the middle down too far. And the other end right here is, that's nine tenths. So it's one tenth under this end right there. So technically the middle and the left end down here is exactly on 51 millimeters, which would be 2.0079. So we're on our size there. We're one tenth bigger on this side right here, but one tenth is not enough to justify having to come back in here and repolish that right there. I'm just gonna check it one more time. Two inches eight and zero tenths. So one tenth bigger right in this, right in this one little area. I could certainly hit it with some um, emery paper, but I just don't think it's necessary for a one tenth there. So I'm gonna call this guy done, finished up, and we're gonna go ahead and get it out of the lathe because this part of the job is finished up. All right, there it is all finished up in the lathe. It turned out really nice. I love that flame spray buildup. If it's applied correctly, you're gonna have a good durable bond on that that's, that's not gonna fail. And I think this is gonna be a really good repair. So we do have one more step that we need to take. Almost forgot about that. So we need to install our key back in the keyway and then we'll go to the hydraulic press or the maybe the electric press and we'll go ahead and press the shaft back through the gear. It's gonna fit. We'll, we'll set that gear down like that and then press the shaft down in the gear and then that'll finish that up completely. All right, our gear, actually it's gonna, we want it that way. Yep. Go ahead and get it started down through there. Oh yeah, it's a pretty close fit. I'm gonna put just a little bit of lubricant on there.
All right, guys, well, this is gonna conclude this portion of the lathe spindle rebuild. I'm real happy with the way that turned out. It looks great, and this is gonna be a really nice uh, repair for this guy right there. So this is all done, completed. We've got one more step to do that's gonna be a separate video. We have our pulley right here that we need to work on. Both ends of it is uh, worn out, so we need to set this up in the lathe, bore both sides, and uh, put a bushing in there. I've just got the, uh, the stock in. This is the bronze bushing material, uh, two by two and a half. Just got that in. I, I buy that stuff from uh, CRC, or Cylinder Repair Components, over in Robertsdale, Alabama. They pretty much have any kind of material you, that you will need for any type of hydraulic cylinder repair. So they have all the, the bronze bushing stock over there for making uh, plane bearings. So uh, for this guy, I'm gonna head down to the new shop. I would like to use my Precision Matthews lathe uh, to get this part of the job done. So we're gonna load up and we're gonna head down there. And uh, hopefully I will see you on the next video that'll complete this uh, lathe spindle repair job. See you there.